Hello, you nine. Welcome back to English. Welcome back to Lord of the Flies. Last lesson, we discussed the idea of propriety, which is the behavior that is expected of you, behavior that's expected of your friends or your family or your school. Uh, one sign that Ralph has a sense of propriety is when he he gives a gesticulation relating to his clothes. Remember that uh, shows that he is uh, behaving as the home counties expect him to behave. That smart, educated boy of the home counties. Um, he pulls his socks up because he's expected to look smart. And even though he's on the island, he uh, he does that gesture. Um, en enmity then means hostile feeling, imicus uh, friendly, inimicus not friendly, hostile feeling, rival rivalry or malice. We're going to look today at the enmity of the island. I labour over the pronunciation because I th keep thinking it's enmity. Uh, William Golding was writing at a time, remember 1956, when there was enmity between what two forces? Remember that context? He was a Navy officer. What was going on in the world? And how does enmity affect the community in Gilead? What rivalries are there between places or people in Gilead? Um, think of the handmaids and who might feel antagonistic towards them. Or what's caused the war in the first place? Hey, you're going to look at how William Golding gives us a mixed impression of the island specifically the impression that there's something menacing about it. Should we do some revision? You've looked at Ralph and Piggy, the characters, the only two characters we've met so far. Uh, Ralph, athletic, fair-haired, Piggy, not athletic, not as classically attractive. You listed some quotations. You also looked at Piggy as this working class you might say victim at the moment of bullying from the middle class character Ralph. Um, you looked at his language. Them other kids, we was attacked. Practice my piggy voice. We was coming down, that sort of thing. And what else did you look at? You looked at the symbolism of the island. We're going to rejoin Piggy and Ralph around the bathing pool area today, which is the area that symbolizes purity and Garden of Eden style innocence. Um, and that innocence is about to be corrupted. Uh, the island has its own persona. Sometimes it's hostile, sometimes it's soothing and pleasing. Um, Golding foreshadows the island's eventual response to the boys' behavior. Remember, the boys are going to be this disruptive presence to the Garden of Eden, but the garden is going to fight back with a menacing side. So we've left Ralph last time bathing in somewhere similar to this. Uh, turquoise sea, coral reef rippling in the distance, um, heat um, shimmering through blue sky. But as William Golding hints at today, there's a menacing sight to the island, roaring waves, um, thrusting granite and hissing wind. Uh, I have been in touch with Dr. Nicola Presley, who runs William Golding's um, the communication for William Golding's uh, website. And I've learned some really interesting things about him over the past few days. He's, he used to be a school teacher that took off his uh, shoes while he's teaching, probably to feel more comfortable. Just as his characters remove their clothes to feel more comfortable, there's a sense that clothes feel stifling and aggressive towards Ralph, and he removes his grey shirt, for instance, soon um as does piggy um so i've learned all these incidental details about his life that help us get him give an impression of more of an impression of what he was thinking when he wrote really interesting um he also william golding said that ralph is learning the same lesson that we went through during the war we had lost our innocence we did heinous things we did terrible things and we all learned that we uh, we're savage when we are away from civilizing influences. So Ralph goes on this journey just as William Golding went on that journey into war. Uh, so we're going to read pages five and six today. 
Uh, and you are going to list five quotations demonstrating the enmity of the island. For example, a fallen tree trunk suggests that there's a power. Um, a fierce. So let's leave. Uh, let's labor over to word. Uh, uh, voila. And we'll start where we left off last time. Ralph plunging into the bathing pool. Now first, should we look at some tricky words? Swathing mirages. A mirage is a, an optical illusion caused by the sun or heat. Swathing means it covers things. So a swathing mirage is a mirage that covers. Effulgence. Fulgo means to glow. So effulgence is anything bright. Fuego. Anyone know any Spanish? Fuego, I think, is fire. I think it's Spanish. As well, you know enmity, and f this is a quotation I could find as an example of the enmity of the island, fallen tree trunks, powerful nature, strong winds. Coral Island, well, coral, as you know, is that bony stuff, but uh, Coral Island as a story inspired William Golding in a number of ways. Firstly, he wanted to write adventure stories in which boys behave as boys do, which is uh, pretty wild when they're away from adults and um, well I generalize massively but um, without laws then societies prey to bad influences and Ralph and Jack and a character called Peterkin are characters in uh, not only Lord of the Flies but in Coral Island Peterkin is actually another or Peter is another word for Simon uh, Dr. Presley tells me, and Simon is in the Lord of the Flies. And uh, that's all I think we'll stop reading there. So let's go and join Ralph on his swim and see what people do. The water was warmer than his blood, and he might have been swimming in a huge bath. Piggy appeared again, sat on a rocky ledge and watched Ralph's green and white body enviously. You can't off swim, Piggy. Piggy took off his shoes and socks, ranged them carefully on the ledge, and tested the water with one toe. It's hot. What did you expect? I didn't expect nothing. My auntie sucks to your auntie. Ralph did a surface dive and swam underwater with his eyes open. The sandy edge of the pool loomed up like a hillside. He turned over, holding his nose, and a golden light danced and shattered just over his face. Piggy was looking determined, began to take off his shorts. Presently, he was palely and fatly naked. He tiptoed down the sandy side of the pool and sat there, up to his neck in water, and smiling proudly at Ralph. Aren't you going to swim? Piggy shook his head. I can't swim. I wasn't allowed. My asthma sucks to your asthma. Piggy bore this with a sort of humble patience. You can't off swim well. Ralph paddled backwards down the slope, immersed his mouth and blew a jet of water into the air. Then he's lifted his chin and spoke. I could swim when I was five. Daddy taught me. He's a commander in the Navy. When he gets leave, he'll come and rescue us. What's your father? Piggy flushed suddenly. Uh, my dad's dead, he said quickly, and my mum. He took off his glasses and looked vainly for something with which to clean them. I used to live with my auntie. She kept a candy store. I used to get ever so many candies, as many as I liked. When will your dad rescue us? As soon as he can. Piggy rose, dripping from the water, and stood naked, cleaning his glasses with a sock. The only sound that reached them now through the heat of the morning was the long, grinding roar of the breakers on the reef. How does he know we're here? Ralph lolled in the water. Sleep enveloped him like the swathing mirages that were wrestling with the brilliance of the lagoon. How does he know we're here? Because 
support Ralph because because the roar from the reef became very distant. They tell him at the airport. Piggy shook his head, put on his flashing glasses and looked down at Ralph. Not them. Didn't you hear what that pilot said about the atom bomb? They're all dead. Ralph pulled himself out of the water, stood facing Piggy and considered this unusual problem. Piggy persisted. This is an island, isn't it? I climbed a rock, said Ralph slowly, and I think this is an island. They're all dead, said Piggy, and this is an island. Nobody don't know we're here. Your dad don't know. Nobody don't know. His lips quivered and the spectacles were dimmed with mist. We may stay here till we die. With that word, the heat seemed to increase till it became a threatening weight. And the lagoon attacked them with a blinding effulgence. Get my clothes, muttered Ralph, along there. He trotted through the sand, injuring the sun's enmity, crossed the platform and found his scattered clothes. To put on a grey shirt once more was strangely pleasing. Then he climbed the edge of the platform and sat in the green shade on a convenient trunk. Piggy hauled himself up, carrying most of his clothes on his arms. Then he sat carefully on a fallen trunk near the little cliff that fronted the lagoon, and the tangled reflections quivered over him. Presently, he spoke, We got to find the others. We got to do something. Ralph said nothing. Here was a coral island, protected from the sun, ignoring Piggy's ill-omened talk. He dreamed pleasantly. Piggy insisted. How many of us are there? Ralph came forward and stood by Piggy. I don't know. Here and there, little breezes crept over the polished waters beneath the haze of heat. These breezes reached the platform. The palm fronds would whisper, so that spots of blurred sunlight slid over their bodies or moved like bright, winged things in the shade. He looked over. Piggy looked up at Ralph. All the shadows on Ralph's face were reversed, green above, bright below from the goon. A blur of sunlight was crawling across his hair. We got to do something. Ralph looked through him. Here at last was the imagined but never fully realised place leaping into real life. Ralph's lips parted in a delighted smile, and Piggy, taking this smile to himself as a mark of recognition, laughed with pleasure. If this really is an island, what's that? Ralph had stopped smiling, was pointing into the lagoon. Something creamy lay among the ferny weeds. A stone? No, a shell. So, we will stop reading there, and remember your task is to find five quotations that uh, hint at the enmity of the island, that aggressive side to the island. Um, bear with me while I find my way back into uh, PowerPoint, so wading back through these windows. I made a summary capturing uh, Ralph's enjoyment, Piggy's uh, shyness.
Ralph enjoying his swim there. Five quotations then, please, demonstrating the enmity of the island. For instance, a fallen tree trunk. Uh, you could talk about roars, things broken, things dark. Uh, to have a read over the text and uh, join us next time and we'll find out more about the shell that's just been spotted. Bye for now.